Okay. Um, thanks for coming today. My name is Sydney Brakefield, and I am the coordinator in the Office of Career and Professional Affairs here on campus. And today I'm going to be talking about LinkedIn, the real social network. Um, and that's a call back to the wonderfully awesome, awful movie, The Social Network. If you haven't seen it, um, watch it. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> Um, before I begin, how many of you um, have heard of LinkedIn? Good. How many of you have a profile already? <laughs> um, other than creating your profile and letting it sit there, how many of you use LinkedIn? Awesome. Okay, this is good. So hopefully you'll learn something today. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so today um, I'm going to briefly go over LinkedIn um, as a platform. Um, it seems like a lot of you already know what it is for and how to use it um, or the basics of it. So I don't want to go into too much detail about um, creating a profile. The last time I gave this workshop, um, I got very technical with it. And so today I want to do um, give a brief over kind of general overview of your profile and the components of your profile, but I mainly want to talk about the features that LinkedIn has that will allow you to do to complete online networking. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about how to build and expand your LinkedIn connections. And that can be if you don't have any connections right now, if you have a few connections, but mainly how to gain more connections. How do you use LinkedIn to network? And then I also um, want to talk about online networking skills. And then also there is a feature within LinkedIn called LinkedIn Learning. Have you any of you heard of that? This one? Cool, okay. I recently, um, not long ago, had I had just heard about it and I think it's a really cool feature. So I thought this would be a good um, place to talk about it. Um, so as you all know, LinkedIn is an online networking platform. Um, it allows you to showcase your skills, your expert, your experience, um, work experience, volunteer experience, research opportunities, internship opportunities, all of that. Um, you can also use it to search and apply for jobs. That's what I had primarily used LinkedIn for. Um, it's a great platform to search um, what kind of jobs are out there, how do you match with the jobs that you're trying to apply for, and then also how to network with people who have the job you're trying to get. Um, it's a great way to connect with industry leaders and peers, um, and I'll go into a little bit more um, about that when I talk about how to make a connection with someone, how to build your connections. And it's also a great way to gain professional development skills. And I'll talk about that when I discuss LinkedIn Learning. So this list is a list of your profile basics. Um, I like to call LinkedIn a professional Facebook um, because it is essentially your, how you promote yourself as a professional, how you promote yourself as a student, as a researcher, um, faculty member, all of that. So LinkedIn is primarily based of your homepage and then your profile. And your profile is where you're going to do a lot of your networking because the great thing about LinkedIn is that it will do the networking for you based on how you build your profile. So um, the first, one of the most important aspects of your profile is your picture. Um, unlike Facebook and Tumblr and Instagram, you want your LinkedIn profile picture to be professional. You want your face to be clearly displayed so whoever is looking at your profile knows it's you. You don't want your, um, fan, your Chiefs fan face paint on from the game. You don't want your bachelorette outfit on in your profile. You want your profile picture to be the best representation of yourself. And I know there for the students and postdocs, I know there are various opportunities across campus um, for you to have your headshot taken. If you don't already have a profile picture or if you don't already have a headshot, I would definitely recommend taking advantage of those opportunities. Um, another good resource is to have someone you know um, take a picture of you 
dress professionally in front of a blank space, in front of a blank wall, um, even a canvas, anything like that. So that way your picture is as professional as it can be. Another good recommendation is to take a picture of yourself in your environment. If you're a researcher, take a picture of yourself in your lab coat in your lab. If you're a faculty member, take a picture of yourself or have someone take a picture of you sitting at your desk. Ultimately, you just want your profile picture to best represent you because that's, all, that's the first thing someone's going to see when your page comes up, um, when you come up in the search for LinkedIn. And I just gave examples of um, professional pictures. These aren't the stereotypical headshots, but in these pictures, these women are for the most part face fronting, fronting, front facing the camera and um, they're dressed professionally. And it's um, a pretty good profile picture to have. And then of course we have LinkedIn versus Instagram. You don't want an unprofessional picture on your profile. The next section is your introduction. Um, and the introduction is basically your run of the mill general information, who you are, where do you live, what is your industry and what is your role in your industry. And the really good thing about LinkedIn is that every component of your profile you can use to network. So you as if you can get as specific as possible on your profile, that will enhance your ability to show up within searches and you can make better connections. So when you list your industry, be as specific as possible. When you list your where you live, be specific. If you have credentials, add those credentials. Your introduction will also, along with your profile picture, be the first thing people see. And your headline. Um, and if you search through LinkedIn, not everyone has a headline, but that's okay. But a headline is a really good way to introduce yourself to people who have searched for you on LinkedIn. Your headline should be two to three sentences and it should be a concise summary of who you are as a professional. Are you a student getting ready to graduate and you're trying to get into the industry? Are you a faculty member who was trying to change their research because you want to try something else? Are you an administrative professional trying to make a career move. As long as you can be as concise as possible and get your message across, whoever comes across your profile will be able to understand who you are and what you're looking for. And in the same vein, your about section should correlate with your headline. So if you think of your headline as a brief introduction, if you were to meet someone in person what would you say about yourself when you introduce yourself? Your about section should be your elevator pitch. Can you tell the person what your research is? Can you tell the person what your work experience is in a matter of four to six sentences? And after looking at the registration list, I know there's a wide variety of um, attendees here. So what I did was search through LinkedIn for kind of general terms and positions. So you all had the opportunity to look at different examples of what your about section could be. Um, what you want to include in your about section is just a short summary of your experience. Where are you coming from? What kind of work experience do you have if you're an administrative professional? If you're a student, what kind of educational experience do you have? What's your research background? Um, where are you coming from? If you're a faculty member, how many years have you been on in your department? What kind of faculty member are you? Again, your about section and your headline are essentially the key ways people who find you on LinkedIn will be introduced to you. That's the first way that you'll be introduced to someone and that's the ultimate, de fact, ultimate factor of how they will connect with you. And this is another, these are a few more um, educational examples. Um, clearly the faculty member about section is longer. Um, the student here on the bottom listed the courses they took. Um, one thing to keep in mind about LinkedIn is you want to use your, you want to use your profile to work for you. So when you, if you haven't created your profile or if it's time to update it, 
take some time to think about what you're trying to get out of LinkedIn. Are you trying to make a career move? Are you trying to get in the industry because you're getting ready to graduate? Are you perfectly fine in your career, but you just want to get to know more people in your field? Um, so when you think of, when you begin to make your profile, when you edit your profile, be sure to think about some of those things and keep those in mind as you update and as you add to your profile. So another important component of your profile is your experience section. And your experience section is essentially everything you have ever done in terms of work experience, um, volunteer opportunities, research opportunities, internships. This is the best way for you to write your resume and to build your CV. Even if you don't have a working document of all of your experience, all of your experiences and your duties, you can use your LinkedIn to write your resume since your resume should cater to the job description um, for the position you're applying for. LinkedIn is the best place to keep track of all the things you've done. And just like your resume, um, it should be listed in reverse chronological order, um, check for grammar, make sure you're using the correct verb tenses, use action verbs. I personally use LinkedIn to update my resume. I haven't needed to update my resume for quite some time, obviously, but in the past, it's, it's my automatic go-to and it should be yours as well. Um, and also you can leave, you can put your LinkedIn profile URL on your resume. Your resume should be concise, it should be short, it should be a summary of everything you've done. But if you have a link to your LinkedIn profile, it will allow the hiring managers, potential mentors, um, even your peers, the opportunity to look at everything you've done because you want to be able to brag about yourself and LinkedIn is the best place to do it. Education. Um, like I said before, every component within your profile is a way for you to network. And when people search for you, you, they can search by university, they can search by high school, they can search by research topic, skill, anything under the sun. And so listing your education helps you find alumni who you went to school with. It'll help you find people you currently work with who may have attended the same school as you. Um, and unless you are an undergrad, um, I don't recommend putting high school. It ultimately is personal preference. Um, it helps you find classmates, but as you get further into your career, into your academic career, um, starting with college and working your way up um, is perfectly fine. Skills and endorsements. So, LinkedIn is essentially a place for you to talk about who you are, what have you done, what have you accomplished. And if you can narrow in on the skills that you've completed and the skills that you've had, that's the best way for you to build a successful LinkedIn profile page. And these skills should be skills that you use in your current position, skills that you use in your research lab, skills that you use as a faculty member, um, they can be new skills that you've acquired. Ultimately, you want to be able to advertise who you are as a person, what can you do, what can you provide, what you bring to the table. And a really good aspect or a really good feature that LinkedIn has, if you don't already know, is that when someone goes to your profile page, they can see the top three skills that you have. And the top, so the top three skills should be the most important. They should be the skills that you use on a regular basis. And one, one feature that's really nice about LinkedIn is if you're having issues trying to figure out what skills you should list, um, what skills do you use, what skills should you have if you're trying to make a career move, you can search those skills on LinkedIn. You can search the skills, look at other people's um, profile pages, look at industry leaders within your interests and see what kind of skills are out there. And when you do a job search, once you pull up a um, job description, LinkedIn will show you how closely you match to that job description based on the skills that you have. So it's really nice to be able to look at a job description and figure out 
okay, well, I have skills one through five that's listed on the job description. They list 10. Is it worth applying for? Should I continue to work towards acquiring those skills? Oh, and endorsements. So endorsements are nice because they are many versions of recommendation letters. So you can have your current connections endorse you as being someone who has, the, uh, has a particular skill has, or is an expert of a particular skill. And within endorsements, there are also recommendations. And that gives your connection, that, give your, that gives your connections the opportunity to talk about you as an employee, as a worker, as a colleague, or even as a classmate. And so when someone goes to your profile, they can see so-and-so, John Smith is an expert in Microsoft Word. He can create files and do all kinds of stuff. And so when people look at those um, recommendations, they have um, a firsthand notice of what you're able to do in terms of the skills you have. Accomplishments and interests are, um, are very good sections to complete within your profile because your accomplishments are a way to build on um, your experiences and to showcase what you've done. And the accomplishments can include patents, they can include publications you've completed, have you presented at conferences, um, have you led any organizations, are you a part of any groups or clubs or anything like that. That's the time for you to showcase that information. And again, that the information you include for that section creates a stronger network for you because people can search for those organizations. People can search for your sorority or fraternity or social organization you're a part of. And if you have it listed, you, that's another connection you can make. And interests are another way for you to build your profile and make connections. If you're interested in, um, or if your field is microbiology, that you can list that as an interest and you can find other people who either work in that field or you can find organizations that um, focus on microbiology. Once again, another profile section that is good for networking and you should definitely complete. Okay, does anyone have any questions for, and I know this is very, very quick and a general overview for profile uh, or building your profile. Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, perfect. Um, okay, building and, and expanding connections. So you have your profile and now it's time to make connections. Um, has anyone ever made an effort to make connections with someone? Have you instigated a connection? Okay, good. Um, one thing that I find very valuable about LinkedIn is that you, your profile and your interactions with LinkedIn basically do everything for you. Um, I'm not sure about anyone else, but networking in person, I would rather do anything else but do that. But if I meet someone at a conference and we are talking about our interests, talking about the papers we presented, I can go back, I can go to LinkedIn, LinkedIn and connect with that person. If I meet someone who I view as a mentor, I can message them through LinkedIn and make that connection. So in-person networking is, can be very scary and intimidating sometimes, but being able to connect to connect with someone through LinkedIn is very beneficial and it definitely takes the pressure off. So when you're thinking about building your um, connections, the first people you should think about are your friends. Um, and that sounds very childish, but like other social media platforms, your friends are always going to be first. They're going to be the foundation. And when it comes to LinkedIn, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. So you may have a friend that works in another industry, but they could have connections to someone who may know someone in your industry. And so it's all about building the network and getting those connections to build your, your web of connections. Um, so start off with friends. Um, next are colleagues and classmates. 
So your classmates and your colleagues are um, a good group of people to provide endorsements for you. So if you and a classmate per, um, completed a research project using a certain set of skills, ask that classmate to write an endorsement for you. Ask um, your colleague who you published a paper with in an academic journal to write an endorsement to you, to, for, to complete an endorsement for you, to write a recommendation for you. Those are the kind of connections you want to have when it comes to working in your industry. And it's also good to have because you can build your connections based on who they're connected with. Um, another group um, who is very beneficial to connect with are your mentors. Um, even if you have a mentor and maybe they were your mentor in undergrad, but you didn't necessarily keep in contact but you want to be able to build up that relationship again, maybe use them as a reference. LinkedIn is a really good um, tool to use to be able to rebuild that relationship. You can connect with them through the platform, send them a message. They'll be able to um, update themselves on what you've been doing so far. Have you been publishing anything? Did you make a career move? Have you changed jobs? Did you change um, schools? Anything like that. And so mentors are great because you can use them. They're another way to build your references and to build your recommendations. And then also they can give you an idea of who else to connect with through LinkedIn. And maybe it's not necessarily through LinkedIn. Maybe they'll give you the name or an email of someone who's also in your industry or who's also at another institution that you're trying to get into um, but essentially, they're just another way um, to build your connection. Um, current and former professors are also good um, to connect with. Um, and again, with the mentors, you don't want to connect with a professor who you had an undergrad in, you know, a Psych 101 class. You want to connect with someone, with a professor who maybe was on your dissertation committee, was on your thesis committee. Maybe you had six or seven classes with them throughout your educational career. Ultimately, you want to be able to, co to connect with someone who you have some kind of relationship with or who you can build a relationship with. Um, for, for the staff in the room, former supervisors. Maybe you worked at an institution for five, six years and you're um, in the process of making a career move. Contact those former supervisors Ask, you know, connect with them, reintroduce yourself, let them know that you're trying to make a career move, figure out who they know in the industry that you can reach out to. Maybe they have some advice they can provide you. Um, maybe they can be um, a reference for you as well. Um, and also associates. Um, I would consider associates also peers. Um, again, people, maybe you went to a conference, maybe you attended a training session with some and you connected with someone and you're in the same field, you're in the same industry and you're trying to um, branch out. Maybe you want to learn more information about a particular field. Um, your peers are another good group to connect with. Um, and like I said before, connecting with others um, really helps expand your network. And one thing I liked about LinkedIn is that when you connect with someone, it'll tell you their connections. And within their connections, it'll tell you how you're connected to the next group of people. So it's almost like seven degrees of separation. So you have your first level connections, second level, third level. Okay, um, when it comes to online networking, um, I said I said it earlier, LinkedIn, if you use it correctly, um, not necessarily correctly, but if you take advantage of it, it can be a really, really great resource to have when it comes to networking. This is a picture of um, the homepage, which you all um, already know. Um, but one thing I recommend doing, and I honestly did not start doing this until um, a few years ago, is to use your homepage. When you become a member of a group or an organization within LinkedIn, um, their updates will show up on your home screen or on your homepage. 
when you connect with people, their updates and what they're posting will show up on your homepage. Um, comment on those posts. Look at who else is commenting on the posts. Look at other people who are members of the organizations and of those groups. If you're trying to get your foot in the door at an institution because you're wanting to make a career change, join that institution's LinkedIn page. Look to see who is on staff there. If you're trying to um, find a new mentor or um, get more, gain more knowledge in your research field, look for the organizations that focus on your interests because those organizations are going to be sending updates, they're going to be making announcements, they're going to be making institution announcements, and LinkedIn is the best place to stay updated. You'll get regular emails. Um, when someone comments, you'll get an update. Another great thing about your homepage is that you can post articles as well. My, my personal Facebook page has basically become um, a collection of um, art criticism articles. So what I started doing was posting those articles on my LinkedIn page. And then people I'm connected with read those articles. And so then I can see who they're connected with. So my own art historical connection has grown just based on me being able to post the articles. And another great thing um, you can see over here is um, news and views. Those are updates based on, sometimes they're just general updates that are happening in the news. Sometimes those are updates based on your own interests. That's another feature that's good to look through because then you can see what other articles people are posting and what other articles are the top features. Okay, um, another great feature, um, this is the career advice is within your dashboard on your profile. Has anyone ever used the career advice feature? Awesome, okay, so the career advice feature is amazing. You can set, um, basically you fill out information about your career. What's your interest? What is your current um, career field? Are you looking for a position? What are, um, what are your goals? You enter this information and LinkedIn will connect you with industry leaders in your field and they will send you advice. You can ask them questions. They will send you articles. They will send you recommendations for other people to connect with. And so it's a really great feature because it's almost like an online ment mentoring um, system. And so for me, you can see I put in um, information about someone who's interested in arts administration. And so I didn't specify what the institution is. I didn't specify what kind of position within the field of arts administration I'm looking for, but I was still able to get career advice from industry leaders. And so um, this feature is really good, especially for students who are getting ready to graduate um, and people who are looking to make major career moves. Are you trying to go from um, a coordinator within a department at a hospital to a marketing firm? Um, so if you haven't already taken advantage, um, definitely look into um, the career advice section. Um, career interests. So the career interest page is very beneficial because it will send you opportunities um, that you may, you didn't realize you were qualified for. So regardless of if you're looking for another job, if you're looking for internship opportunities, if you're looking to just volunteer within your field, you can fill out this, um, this section of your dashboard and it will send you updates. It will let you know where, um, when opportunities arise with, um, in the greater metro area. If you're trying to move to another city and you're interested in the opportunities that are open there, it will give you all of that information. Um, oh, so I skipped over groups and organizations, but I touched a little, I touched on it a little bit earlier. 
Um, one thing that I find beneficial with groups and organizations is just meeting new people. And I say meeting because it's all online. But um, when you're a member of a group or of a, of a group or an organization within LinkedIn, like I said before, you'll get updates about the institution. Um, I am a member of a few museums, the, the museum pages on LinkedIn. So whenever there's a new exhibit, that gets um, that pops up. When they hire a new curator, that pops up. So when you become members, when you become a member of these groups and organizations, it helps you gain firsthand knowledge of what's going on in the industry, what's going on in the field. Are they developing um, a new method for something? Well, if you're a member of a particular organization who is a leader in that field, you'll get that knowledge. And then once again, you can connect with the other members and um, see what they're posting and see what their updates are. Um, the search feature, um, I included the search feature because I feel like if you don't know a lot about LinkedIn, you don't know exactly what all it entails. And I love the, the search feature because I like to investigate people in a field um, so what I'll do is I'll type in my career field or an interest that is within my career field and you can choose either do you want to search people who have that job or that in, that skill or interest do you want to search jobs that um, qualify under that skill or interest content which includes articles web postings um, companies schools and groups so if you're having problems trying to develop your skills, your skills list on your LinkedIn profile, you can use that feature. If you're trying to find new people to connect with, you can search biochemistry, search people, and people who either studied biochemistry or list biochemistry as an interest or skill, they will pop up and you can use that as a way to build your connections. Um, for jobs, LinkedIn, the job, I won't go into too much detail about the job search feature, um, but searching for jobs on LinkedIn is, um, is a really, really great feature to use or to be able to take advantage of. Um, you can search for a particular salary range. You can search for um, a location. You can search for, of course, you can search for a specific industry. Um, but using that feature gives you a really good idea of what's currently out there and what do you need to do so you match a particular position. Do you need additional skills? Do you need additional training? What can you do to match a particular position um, or a particular job description that's out there? Um, one thing that it's really good to use is to figure out um, education. So if you're trying to make a career move, maybe you have a degree in chemistry, a bachelor's of science in chemistry, but you're trying to make a career move in something completely different, graphic design. Okay, well, you definitely need experience in graphic design, but are there people out there who may not have an educational background in graphic design? You can search graphic design as a skill set. You can search graphic design as a job and you can figure out what is it that you need. You can look for people who are at your um, career level and figure out what do they have? What are you missing? What do you need? Um, when it comes to your online brand, definitely can take into consideration what you are trying to portray. What uh, is it about yourself that you're trying to advertise? Do you have a side business? Do you have a podcast? Do you have an online website? If you're using other, other social media platforms, you want to make sure that all of your social media platforms are consistent across the board. So maybe that means putting your company's logo as your background picture on your profile page. Add your company's website. If you write on the side for fun and you have a website, add your website. 
if that if it has nothing to do with your research add it it may grow it may help you grow other connections and another thing to take into consideration is um, when it comes to using LinkedIn, how are you, what are you trying to gain from it? What are you trying to get out of LinkedIn? What are you trying to gain from your connections? Are you just trying to network with people who are like-minded with you? Are you trying to network with people who are in your career field? Um, that's something to take into consideration. Oops, not yet, okay. Um, so one thing I do want to talk about, um, and I mentioned it a little bit before, your, um, your about section and your headline. Um, think about, so if you think about it as your elevator pitch, when you meet someone, if you have that in the back of your mind, you won't, have, you won't be stumbling to introduce yourself. You can say, oh, my name is so-and-so, this is what I do, this is what I'm looking for. And also add that if you're looking for a career move, if you're looking for a new job, add that in your headline or add that in your about section. So that way, if you apply for a job and a hiring manager goes to your LinkedIn profile, they can see, okay, they're looking for a career change. They're looking to get hired for X, Y, and Z. Okay. Um, so I have a brief summary. Um, and one thing to remember, of course, is to keep your profile professional. It should always be professional. Hopefully, if someone searches for you online, um, your LinkedIn page is the first thing that comes up. Um, and if it doesn't, then at least your LinkedIn will, your picture will look professional and someone will take you seriously. Um, second, be, per, be strategic with the information you provide. Keep in mind that every piece of information you add to your profile, you can use to network with someone else. You can use to network, to gain a new job, to find a mentor, to find someone who can be your peer within your industry. Um, also, um, don't be afraid to connect with other people. Um, I know, like I said before, in-person networking can be very daunting, but if you read an article by someone um, and they're on LinkedIn, reach out to them, ask them questions. If you attend a conference and the person who leads the panel of a particular workshop you um, are sitting in is on LinkedIn, connect with them. Reach out to them and let them know that you're interested in their research, you're interested in what they had to present. Um, even coworkers, if you meet someone new, connect with that cowork coworker because you don't know who else they can connect with. Um, and again, share articles and posts from industry websites. Um, that's a great way, again, to get an idea of what's going on in your industry. Um, and also, it just keeps you updated about what's going on and it helps you build your connection network in terms of who else is show, who else is sh sharing um, those posts, who is writing those articles, who is commenting on those articles. Um, and again, regularly interact with other people um, who are members of groups and organizations. Um, that's a great way to figure out what is going on in your field. That is a good way to figure out what other people within your um, interest area what, they're, what are they doing? What are they doing to get ahead in the industry? What kind of, what are they doing to gain skills that you may need? Um, and again, make your profile work for you. Are you looking to make a career move? Are you um, looking to gain more research experience and you are trying to get hired somewhere as a research, as a research fellow? Are you a grad student getting, um, trying to get their foot in the door at, an, at a particular institution? Whatever that is, figure that out and make your profile work for you because LinkedIn basically does everything for you. Um, make sure you're searchable for a particular skill set that you have. Make sure that you're listing the correct skills that you have. Um, if you're trying to gain new skills, complete the training and add those to your profile. 
And also, it's really, really important to update. Update, update, update. Um, not only is it important if you're using your LinkedIn profile as a way to write your resume and CV, but you don't know who's looking at your profile. LinkedIn will send you updates telling you that nine people viewed your profile this week, but it, those names and those um, industry people may not show up if you have the premium version it will. But um, with the regular version, you don't know who's looking at it. You don't know if the hiring manager for the position you just applied for is looking at your profile. You don't know if the mentor that you just reached out to is looking at your profile. So it's important to keep things updated and to keep things streamlined. And um, especially when it comes to your about section, keep it concise. And just um, keep in mind that your profile, again, is the best representation of you and um, your skills and abilities. Um, and so I wanted to talk about LinkedIn Learning real quick. OK, so this is LinkedIn Learning, and it is essentially a professional development platform within LinkedIn. So you can, um, oops, it's not working. Okay. So they, you can search for um, classes and training sessions based on a particular skill, based on a particular subject. Um, and you can watch these sessions and it's a good way to gain new skills. It's a good way to update your professional development background. One thing I can say, unfortunately, it does cost money. Um, it's $30 a month, but if you sign up for the free trial for premium, you can have it for free for a month. So um, personally, that's what I did. I signed up for premium, did the free trial, and so I'm going to sign. I'm going to sign up for classes. But this is just another um, example of the different features that LinkedIn has. And so, if you feel like um, maybe you don't have time to go to a professional development workshop offsite, you can go to LinkedIn. You can you can tell that LinkedIn how often do you want to take these training sessions? How long do you want these training sessions to last? And it will cater to your schedule. And so um, this, what you complete here will connect to your profile. So if you complete a session on um, Adobe Photoshop, now that's another skill to list on your profile that will then make you searchable if someone searches for um, Adobe Photoshop. Um, so does anyone have any questions so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. 